A lot of you know I've been getting a ton of hate. Just to set the record straight from the beginning, I want to say I am not anti-Semitic and I am not an anti-vaxxer. The way that Jeffrey chooses to live his life and treat other people is not something that I personally agree with. He was so paranoid that that he thought he could cancel my show by going to the network and showing them this 8x10 with a forged anti-Semitic message on it. After all this recent hate, it's just, uh, you know, enough is enough and it's just time for me to finally speak up into the record straight. Once upon a time, Kat Von D built an empire. She used her television presence to land a spinoff and then established a beauty brand that made millions. But despite her success, she never seemed grateful. From internet feuds to conveniently placed swastikas, it almost seems like Kat Von D wanted to ruin her own reputation. So let's get into it. Kat Von D is a tattoo artist who took her career and turned it into a brand, which included television, makeup products, and social media influence. At one point, she was at the top of her game until she ruined it all. So today, I want to talk about where Kat Von D came from, how she became famous, and then how she destroyed everything. Now, she started tattooing at the age of 14, which doesn't sound right, but she created a device out of a guitar string and a motor that was meant for a cassette player. Two years later, at the age of 16, she dropped out of high school and started tattooing at Sin City Tattoo in Los Angeles. I can't believe she was tattooing people at the age of 16 because I feel like that doesn't sound legal. I know you have to have certain certifications to gift tattoos, I didn't realize minors could do that. I mean, I doubt she played by the rules, but she was quoted saying that, I think when I started getting tattoos, it was really scary for my parents. You know, I had a mohawk and I was 14 when I stopped going to school. Sounds like a handful. Now, while it's a scary position to be in when you have a child who's like running off, leaving school to go and tattoo people, it was rewarding for Kat because she was really passionate. And that's what led her to her big break in 2005 when a reality television show came out titled Miami Inc. And honestly, I remember seeing this on the television when I was growing up. At first, Kat wasn't supposed to be on the show despite being the breakout star. There was a man named Darren Brass who was supposed to be on the first season Season, but he injured his elbow and Kat filled in. I said don't be mean to me because this is, oh, I'm sorry, because on. everybody here Wait, stop, is, stop. Why Listen. can't I stop? stop? Because I'm the boss, okay? And I'm so tired of people not listening when I'm talking, especially you. Now, while Kat started in Miami on Miami Inc., the show went to LA, and that's when she became the main star. After two years of Miami Inc., she decided to branch off and have a spin-off series titled LA Inc., where she had her own store, and actually, this series did even better than Miami Inc. She was quoted saying that it had tripled the amount of viewers that Miami Inc. did. She also described Miami Inc. as monotonous and repetitive, which she felt like her program was far more complicated and complex more like a reality show than just like a tattoo, you know, series. Because LA Inc. was doing so well, everyone wanted to work with Kat Von D. And that included Sephora, who reached out to her in 2008. She launched her own limited edition line in May 2008, which had four lipsticks, two eyeshadow palettes, six eyeliners, and some brushes. And they did very well. I remember back in the old school YouTube days, everyone was eating her brand up. A lot of YouTubers like Manny Mueller Tati Westbrook, Nikki Tutorials were all using her products. The popularity was seemingly the result of Kat Von D's unique packaging, standout shades, and innovative launches, which I think, you know, Kat Von D is an interesting person to look at. She has an interesting life, an interesting aesthetic, so it makes sense that people are fascinated by her products. So Kat was killing it. She had the YouTubers on her side, she has Sephora on her side, she had a great reality show. And then it all started to fall down and fall apart and she just completely ruined her reputation and her brand. And it actually started with her makeup brand because in 2013, she got a little too comfortable with the naming and she named one of her lipsticks a beige color called Celebutard. And customers did not like that because um, I guess organizations like the Down Syndrome Uprising and All About Developmental Disabilities, which are two foundations, expressed frustration with the like 
tarred part of the word. It's just, it's very unnecessary. I don't feel like you need to name a product that. Sephora pulled the product from the store shelves as a result of the backlash. And Kat Von D wrote on Twitter, at the end of the day, it's just an effing lipstick, which she then deleted. But that wasn't the first time she put out a lipstick with a bizarre name. And it makes you question her morals because she released another lipstick titled Underage Red, which doesn't sound good. I mean, people argued that the name suggested that younger girls are wearing this red to try to look sexy. Like, I mean, clearly underage and then the color red. People were even posting on Twitter, like, why do I see this in a Sephora? Which, you know, Sephora probably doesn't like having the backlash due to her naming. I think one of the reasons why Kat Von D hasn't survived throughout her career is because she's always very defensive. She responded in a Facebook post and she kind of acknowledges like what people are saying and then kind of like justifies it in a way too. Like she claims that she remembers being 16 years old and wearing this kind of shade of red and wanting to wear it. She loved like rock and roll music. And I guess like it was inappropriate for her to be wearing that like at that age, at this time, I'm not sure, but um, she's kind of naming it after her being a young girl, like wanting to wear this. And it kind of like alludes to the name that people are upset by. She's arguing that it's not a color that promotes sexualization of any sorts or promotes a destructive lifestyle. She says, no, I refuse to sacrifice my integrity and creative freedom. No, I will not be pulling underage red from my collection. And no, this is not an apology. Whew. Now, I don't think we can talk about Kat Von D without talking about Jeffree Star because they had quite the friendship. And supposedly a lot of his initial success is due to Kat helping him get established. And even though they had a decent business relationship, it didn't work out because in 2016, Kat Von D publicly ended her friendship with Jeffree Star on Instagram. Jeffree and Kat argued on Twitter, which led to Kat to film a YouTube video about Jeffree, which has now been deleted, but of course reposted. She called out Jeffree for bullying, using veganism to sell makeup, and not paying the artist who created his brand's logo, among other claims. Now we all know Jeffree Star is no angel, but clearly she is here trying to drag him and there is some personal beef and honestly jeffrey star is one person i probably would not want to cross paths with and you know fight with because he is brutal i do remember this claim by this artist who said that jeffrey did not pay for the artwork and i don't know if jeffrey did not pay or what exactly happened there i don't think he did pay because if the artist is out here like claiming they weren't paid then they probably were not paid. I don't think anyone's going to make that up. Either way, this was a nasty fight. And you know, Jeffree Star was upset when he saw that she posted this video all about him and just trying to ruin his brand. And at this point, like Jeffree's doing very, very well on like YouTube. So I feel like Kat, while doing this, like, yeah, it's like stabbing Jeffree in the back and like maybe like hurting him, but it's also losing a big part of her fan base who are so loyal to him. Hey guys, it's Kat over here. Uh, I just want to uh, post this video regarding what I posted earlier about Jeffree Star and my recent decision to distance myself, actually to disassociate myself completely from him and his makeup line. You know, being associated with somebody who does do the things that he does, it really makes me nervous because I don't want my fans or followers to think that that's a good example. Of, uh, I remember, you know, seeing him go off on this rant and really commanding his followers to start attacking this other really much smaller brand who made lip glosses, not even lipsticks, because of some human error in label labeling. You know, I remember, I think like the brand had accidentally labeled something with Carmine and they had claimed to be vegan and he just went off on this brand. And I remember thinking, wait, you're not even vegan. I mean, I know you're, you're, you, you like to put that word onto your packaging so that you can like bring in the vegan bucks, but like you totally eat animal products and not, not only that, but you like promote Mac and like tons of other L'Oreal, like all of the biggest makeup lines that like actually test on animals now, I don't think Kat is lying here. This is just part of her downfall because of this drama, which really got her into trouble. I'm not here to say one person was right or not, but these two were very good friends. So this is like watching a really personal relationship, like just disintegrate in front of our eyes. Just because I call you out on social media about being a bully doesn't mean when you, that you can post a tweet that says, hey, Kat Mondi has never supported me in my my makeup line when honestly Jeffrey if it wasn't for me you wouldn't be where you are now I mean I introduced Jeffrey to BJ and then BJ drew up his logos Jeffrey went 
forward with them and it's the logos that you guys see now on all of the caps of all of his lipsticks and then never never paid bj and bj would call him and basically jeffrey blocked his phone so the minute that i found out about that which was this last saturday i texted jeffrey and said hey jeffrey can you explain to me why you haven't paid bj and he basically told me to fuck off and of course jeffrey responded with a video of his own which he claimed that cat backed out of being an investor in jeffrey star cosmetics and that like she has nothing to do with his success he also claims that, of course, he paid that artist, but it doesn't really explain the blocking situation. Um, if you do not know the scenario, basically two summers ago, my brand was skyrocketing, Kat Von D was stagnant, and she decided to cross out my face and um, let the internet know a bunch of crazy lies. Of course, I responded and debunked everything that she said because she was completely full of sh and there's always just been a weird tension ever since. Now that was a YouTube feud that made history, but that's not Kat Von D's only questionable relationship because she's also had some romantic relationships which are bizarre. Let's talk about this man named Jesse James. Jesse James is a questionable man who once was married to Sandra Bullock. He actually cheated on Sandra, which led to their divorce, but they were together for five years and even went through the process to adopt a child together. Despite Jesse being a terrible man for cheating on Sandra, Kat Von D decided Decided to go and hook up with him. Now, Kat was definitely Jesse's rebound, but she decided to marry him anyways. Six months after they were married, Kat Von D called it off because he went on to cheat on her with 19 different women. Kat Von D took to her weapon of choice a lengthy Facebook post, which she does tend to do that. And she actually called out her former fiance. She wrote, Thank you, Jesse James. And she claimed that she encountered the 19th girl to add to the list that Jesse had cheated on her with. She also admitted that she was getting tired of getting mistaken for the person who broke up Jesse's marriage to Sandra Bullock. Now, I'm not surprised that Kat Von D had issues with Jesse James, but I'm also not surprised that she went for this kind of man. The reason why I started off saying that he was controversial is because in 2010, he was photographed wearing a Nazi hat and giving a salute. His lawyer put out a statement claiming that he was gifted this by a Jewish friend sounds a little bit complicated, but nonetheless, it's really bizarre. And I think it speaks to probably his morals and his intentions, his beliefs. Like, I don't like that vibe, but don't worry about Kat because she moved on. And in 2018, she decided to marry a man named Raphael. She ditched the traditional idea of a white wedding gown and opted for a bold blood red dress. And I'm not against a bold wedding. I think that that can be cool, but her wedding had some satanic qualities. I mean, looking at her alone, she looks kind of evil with the red horns and the red dress. But let's go through the other factors of this wedding, which are questionable. Now, the invitation was sent in a black box with Latin words on it, which read in life and in death. The invitation itself is written on the back of a skull with an inverted cross on the forehead. The cross is placed right on the pineal gland, which is also known as the third eye. And honestly, if I was sent this to my home, I would be like, oh no, was I just cursed? Like we need to get this out of my home. Something about this is just giving me the creeps. I don't know if I'd want to go here because the wedding itself was spiritual as well. And her husband, Raphael, has his own history because he put out some music Music with some questionable lyrics, like writing, sleeping with the devil just to pay my rent. He also wrote, I'm effing your girlfriend and I'm wearing her lipstick. I'm effing your girlfriend while she's painting my nails. <laughs> okay. There are also performers at this wedding which were dressed in all red latex. Mm, it looks like, like more of like a sex party. Of course, the ceremony room was all blood red with red lighting, looking super scary and creepy. And all the decor included these like candles, which were all melted. We've got like black candles which are supposed to be evil. We've got skulls everywhere. It looked more like a ritual ceremony than a wedding. And I feel like it kind of takes away, I don't know. I mean, I love a good, like, again, like an interesting wedding, some character to it, but it's like, it doesn't even seem like it's about them anymore. It seems like they're doing it for something else, something evil. But she ended up marrying this man and she ended up getting pregnant. And when she got pregnant, there was a new set of controversies because she claims she's not taking anybody's advice. She's going to be doing everything very natural, very drug free. Her child would be raised vegan and no vaccines would you guys know how people feel about vaccines nowadays the backlash was swift from people who argued that vaccines are important in controlling diseases and that it would be irresponsible for a celebrity to spread the opposite message that 
actually resulted in people boycotting Kat Von D's beauty brand. And I'm no doctor, but I know as a baby, I was given my vaccines and those things can be very scary. But she claims after doing her research, she's not going to be doing those things, which I understand is like a personal decision, but also at the same time um, that, yeah, she's got that influence. And I, I know there's been other celebrities in the past who have gotten themselves in trouble for pushing certain things that maybe like, you know, society doesn't really agree with. Because people were boycotting her brand, she was quick to run to the post and tell them that the truth is she's not an anti-vaxxer at all. She made a mistake by posting about this and she was completely uninformed. Like, I honestly, I don't think she like, feels this way. I really think this is her trying to save her brand. She said, I really shouldn't have opened my big mouth on the subject. I mean, she didn't have any issues with Jesse James hat, but back in 2008, Kat Von D had her own history because she wrote an anti-Semitic autograph to her Miami Inc. co-star. There were no witnesses to this message being written, but according to the publication, a fellow co-star, Chris, told TMZ that Kat Von D handed him the photo. TLC claimed that they would be investigating the photograph at this point, and Kat Von D called it forgery but i mean do you think tlc is going to do anything because she was getting the most views on their channel at this point point. and even though she's calling it forgery her co-star who received it claims it's not actually he hired a lawyer to intervene so tlc was forced to investigate they actually worked with a handwriting analyst who concluded that there was a 99 percent probability that kat von d wrote the message when he confronted tlc about the results they simply sent him a letter back that acknowledged receiving the results and said we trust that this information will be kept strictly confidential and of course they want it confidential they want to protect their money maker and look at this message uh what a nasty woman if she like for doing this like oh god it just like whew, it irks me when this story was leaked tlc was confronted by it and they claimed they did their investigation kat von d denies it and they did not take any action because they can't conclude that she did it even though he hired this analyst and told them that yeah she probably did and honestly i would feel uncomfortable working with someone if they would feel comfortable like writing that i mean alone i would feel uncomfortable working with someone who has those beliefs but then like writing it down and then passing it to me like as a bully, it just doesn't really seem right. I mean, she doesn't seem right. But that's not the first time she's had this like Nazi vibe because she released a pink lipstick in 2015 titled Selektion, which is a German word for selection used by Nazis. Also in 2017, she compared animal slaughter to the Holocaust and of course a Facebook post, which upset a lot of people. Kat Von D did very well on LA Inc. She resonated with people, but after that show, she really couldn't and she wasn't relatable and it was hard for her to get her message across because I mean she seems like a mess and her putting out a 11 minute video on YouTube titled I am not a Nazi I am not anti-vax didn't really help the situation she claims that an unnamed Miami Inc co-star felt threatened by her popularity and strong womanhood that she had on the show that at the time this co-star sabotaged her tattoo equipment sent her inappropriate photos and touched her without consent and later Later, he used the anti-Semitic autograph, which Kat Von D claims was forged, in hopes of canceling her spinoff. He was so paranoid that LA Inc. would replace Miami Inc., which eventually it did, that he thought he could cancel my show by going to the network and showing them this 8x10 with a forged anti-Semitic message on it. I have no idea who actually forged the message, but what I do know is that the man who treated me so terribly on set took this 8x10 and threatened the network in saying that if they don't cancel LA Inc. that he would go to all these different media outlets and uh, release the 8x10 with the forged message on it. Now, Kat can go and post all the YouTube videos that she wants, but she's not addressing some key aspects, like the time her former boyfriend dressed up as a Nazi when they were dating, and the fact that her husband has a swastika tattoo on his neck. Because her brand was falling apart in 2020, she sold it off to a bigger company that she had been working with, and completely removing herself and her, her identity, her reputation from that brand, hopefully trying to save it as a business. Keep in mind, there's a lot of people who were employed by her beauty brand and those are a lot of jobs that are lost if she's going out in the public and just saying these things and acting careless she wrote in order to avoid any confusion with such big change Kat Von D Beauty will take a moment to rebrand itself and you'll start noticing the change from Kat Von D Beauty to KVD Vegan Beauty 
That's a long name. Even though Kat Von D wiped her hands clean of the beauty brand, she still has her tattoo shop. And in January 2022, she was sued by a former employee who claims that she was let go because Kat wasn't taking the COVID lockdown seriously. She claims that Kat Von D refused to follow COVID protocols and that she was pretty much making fun of the pandemic. At one point, this employee was wearing a face mask and Kat said, you're going to wear that maxi pad on your face, making fun of the fact that she was doing that. She also claimed that she wasn't paid properly during COVID, that she wasn't paid her hourly wage or a base salary. She was provided with 10% share of every tattoo paid for each day, which on some days was $0. So that employee is fighting their case as they should. If they weren't treated right, then go and get your justice. But that's not the only issue with this tattoo shop because the landlord of the studio claims that Kat wasn't paying rent and owes $92,000 in rent. That case is still going on but the landlord claims that she asked for tiling to be replaced a wall to be knocked down a bunch of renovations to be done and she has not paid up but it seems like Kat is trying to change herself because she did claim that she got baptized and she now renounced witchcraft that she's now changing as a person and that's good for her if she wants to do this she claims that she's giving up a bunch of books all this witchery all these spells which i mean oh all that stuff freaks me out so i'm like good go ahead and get rid of it she said she's leaving her dark ways behind that she got baptized that she is now a christian and she is you know into the faith after years of being like low-key evil and i i don't know it's kind of interesting to see i mean i didn't realize she was like i mean she had all these books i wonder if she was really reading them this article writes this seems to be a major departure for kat von d since these themes have long been part of her aesthetic and brands her former beauty brand offered a tarot inspired collection with a black lipstick named witches and for example her current shoe line offers a coffin shaped wallet so uh it's still a big part of her brand even though she's trying to rebrand herself and I really hope she's rebranding herself as a person to be a better person because it seems like over her career she's had a lot of missteps and maybe she could take some ownership for those and kind of acknowledge and learn from them because it's not really a great look especially because i did fall in love with her as a kid like watching the television show and she was likable she was cool she had a vibe and then she just like ruined herself on social media so i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below and i'll see you in a new video soon bye guys